stuff happening everywhere. We got some really cool things we're going to go over today. And, um, uh, and it is going to be very interactive. So, you know, make sure you get your pens and pads out and your thinking cap on because we're going to need that today. All right, stand by. I got that muted. Good morning. This is Jason Miles of Georgia Manufacturing Alliance, Manufacturing News Network. And today, um, May the 21st, we're, we're uh, you're joining us for our retooling and relaunch call for GMA. And uh, today we got some, some, some fun stuff we're going to be talking about. And this is going to be a super interactive call. So we, we really are going to be, be asking for your participation, your insights on what's working out there. Um, and, um, and, and we're going to do something fun with this uh, as, as a project, as a team project. You guys ready for that? All right, all right. So, so the game plan is, um, some of you guys don't know, and, and there's gonna be, there, you know, we've got Memorial, it's, it's Memorial Day, right? Um, some holiday coming up. Yes. Yeah, okay, so that's what that is. Um, <laughs> I, don't, I don't keep track of that stuff too good, but we're gonna have some break on Monday, so we're not doing the town halls, all I gotta know about. Um, but uh, 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 so we're not gonna be doing a call this Monday, but the following Monday, we're gonna have a huge, huge call, and we're gonna be inviting folks, everybody that's ever attended any of the calls. We've had you know hundreds and hundreds of different people that have engaged in different parts of the calls that we've provided. And we're going to be doing uh, some promotion about this uh, to talk about uh, moving forward, like legit. And so, so you guys are the cornerstone. You guys are the are, are the um, uh, the folks that really are going to be able to give some insights, some input into crafting this next piece. So we've decided what we're going to do is we are going to uh, we're going to develop a ninety day COVID nineteen business recovery plan, right? And it's not going to be the, the brainchild of Jason Moss. It's going to be the collective input from the folks that are in the field making this thing happen. If you're on this call, we understand that, uh, that you're serious about it. I mean, JT got on the call, said, man, I'm ready to go. Get back out there and get after this stuff, right? And so, so what we're going to do is we're going to share the insights of the, the business leaders. I just got off, got off the phone with um, uh, top exec at Clorox and, and picked his brain a little bit and got some, got some good good insights there um but so so my 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 request is that you 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 uh share your thoughts and input on this uh, on this project and and so uh it is going to be crowdsourced information and and this is the foundation and this is the format that we're going to we're going to kind of go through that and, and we're going to talk about it but also uh what i'd love for you to do if you have not done this yet um uh, uh, hop down in the chat window, and what we need you to do is go ahead and in the chat window. Many of you guys have already done this, so so you guys know the drill. Uh, put in your name, your company, your phone, email, um, you know, best way to get a hold to you. And and so Koki is working. Uh, uh, Actually, I think we're all members, so uh, we can find each other on the online directory. Yes, we can. Yeah, yeah. We yeah, just want to sure. get a record record in there. Uh, of that so um yeah, if you got just a second just make sure that we tag that because because if not we'll have to go back and figure out who's sort of who's who because sometimes we get uh people that will plug in um and oh. this will allow you that that if um an easy way to be able to reach back out to folks at the very end if you want to click those three dots by the by the two in the chat window you can download the entire chat history uh, from this call and you got it in one place and it's really easy because typically <laughs> when we do when we do plant tours what we do is we collect everybody's business card and give them a copy of that as a kind of as a reminder. So this is effectively a digital business card. So that's sort of the game plan. So, um, so that's the, that's the story. And, and, um, and again, this, this 90 day COVID business recovery plan, everybody's coming at this at a different angle. And, and my request for you guys is I want you to think about the number one thing that, that you're doing, um, to get back to business. My, I'm going to ask for three, your top three ideas on what businesses need to be doing to prepare. And, and so we're going to, again, we're, we're just going to share best practices. We're going to talk through this. Um, if you can, you know, and as we, as we go through these, 
feel free if you already know your top three and you want to go ahead and type those dudes into the notes. So we'll have a, again, a record of that. Um, and I'm going to give you just a minute to do that. Uh, if you got three things, what are the, what are the three most important things that you need to do as a business leader in sales, as a business owner in operations, um, you know, in, in a supporting role, you know, so what are the three things from your vantage point? You know, and, and, kind of, and it would be helpful to kind of put your role in there as well. So if you're in, in sales, um, if you're in, you know, business development, if you're in engineering, you know, what is, um, what are the three, three main things that you can do? And what, again, what, what, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be consolidating all this information. And I know that there's going to be some overlap, you know, I mean, there's manufacturers, there's, I'm not going to, I'm not going to direct the response by giving you any insights on what I think the top three things are. But uh, so we're going to take just a minute and, and I'm going to give everybody just a minute to type in what are the three most important things as a business that we need to do to have a successful relaunch in 90 days. Now, some of you folks are already working through stuff. I'm going to hush and just let you guys do that. And when you see where you're at. Okay, you guys ready? All right, so we're going to kind of just sort of hash through these things. Um, you know, feel free, like I said, just key those things into, uh, drop them into the, the chat chat window as, as you can. And, and we'll sort of, you know, again, we just want to have an open dialogue about this, um, about what you see, again, from, from your vantage point as a, uh, whatever your role is, you know. And, and Cassie, it looks like I, I see you popped in here. Um, you know, uh, share with us a little bit about what your thoughts are around this. And tell us, for, for those of you that don't know Cassie, introduce yourself, company, your role, you know, kind of how you're engaged in this space. Hey, everyone. Yeah, so I'm Cassie Nettles. I'm with Ad Victorium Solutions. Um, we are actually a consulting firm for manufacturers in the, um, the CRM and um, integration space. So we help uh, our manufacturers um, use the Salesforce platform and consolidate all of their operating systems into one. Um, for us, you know, the big thing is we're, we're a remote business anyway. Sorry, guys, my cat is joining. I was like, wow, what was that? <laughs> He's on the back of my finger. It's, it's weird. I know. Um, so, yeah, you know, most of our employees are remote anyway, but uh, we do have an office in the Alpharetta space. So um, for us, it's, it's been interesting because, you know, most of our employees are used to working remote, um, but we're actually having to push people away from coming back to the office because so many people are wanting to come. So I think it's really important to kind of 
identify what those limitations are on who can be in the office, making sure that your floor plans are set up to support those. Um, and you know, this is true for the manufacturing space as well, making sure that floor plans can still uh, support all the social distancing best practices. Mm -hmm. um, but then also we've been from the beginning, just great with open communication, full transparency on where we're at, where our revenue stream is coming from, um, you know, how long-term, how long we can stay open if everything were to shut down. Um, and so just full transparency with our employees has made that comfort level a hundred times better. So I think those are the, probably the most important things. Fantastic. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. All right. Beautiful. It looked like LD had gotten in. Uh, 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 share, share with us a little bit about uh, kind of what you're seeing, LD. What's your, what's your... Good morning, everybody. Glad to be here and on this call. Uh, we've been, we've been open the, the whole time, um, just with the closed lobby. Um, so this is sort of something that we've, we've been putting into practice, um, for a while now. Um, and you know, we're, we're not just manufacturing signs, but we're also retail so that we are dealing with, um, that aspect of things. So communicating, um, to our customers, our new procedures is, is a big one. Um, not just the employees, but um, just sort of uh, trying to make sure that they know over the phone if they want to, there's no need to come up here because our lobby's closed. And just sort of trying to take the, the, the guesswork out of, of, of how we're running things here. So sending out emails, um, a lot of signage up front um, is sort of how we've been dealing with the communication aspect, as well as um, what Cassie was saying, we have a lot of transparency from within, from the owners uh, on those very same things, how long we could stay open if there was a full closure, um, just uh, what the procedures are within, cleaning down materials when they come in, cleaning down packages um, when they come in as well. So just constantly um, keeping, keeping that line of communication open. Um, and then the other thing that, I've, uh, that has been important here on our team is just the employee morale. Um, because the stress level has, has went up uh, immensely with all the new procedures, um, <laughs> you know, and so there's been, the, the owners have been really good about constantly checking in just on your mental status, you know, how, how is everything, um, and, and trying to see where they can jump in, and the, there's been a lot of cross, um, it's not really training, but wherever there's the need for the extra help, we've all sort of been jumping in to help alleviate that stress. Um, so the, the constant check-ins have been great. And then um, the third one, I can't remember what I put on my third one. Uh, um, oh, about the consistency. Um, and if you have multiple locations um, or just even consistency from one, uh, one customer to the next and one okay. vendor to the next, you know, so that you can develop if you have a procedure that it becomes that sort of muscle memory where that, that you don't have to go and look at a list of what are, what are the new things we're trying to do. So having been open the past couple months um, and keeping that consistency, it's, it's now become just a habit of how we do things here. So. And that's cool. I mean, you, you, you guys have a very, again, a very unique perspective that you have been running retail and been engaging mm -hmm. with customers and have been open the whole time mm -hmm. um and and that's that's pretty neat you know um that the that the community is about that so so ld thank you so much for that insight and sure. uh, and cassie again thank you so much for for being our our first one in the shoot so thank mm -hmm. thanks so much for that and and koki is um koki's a uh, a superstar in gma world she has been she has been the scribe for all of these calls so all the all the show notes that you see, she does a fantastic job of keeping that up. And, and what was your, uh, share a little bit about your thoughts on the three key things for, for a successful 90 day relaunch or recovery. For me? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, we're actually going, you know, I'm helping out peerless performance with incentive programs because I found that need servicing here at GMA as far as you know, there's new PPE uh, measurements in place, but how do you keep um, the employees up front with wearing the mask and keeping the social distancing? So um, FINA actually uh, has a, a safety engagement incentive program besides uh, regular incentive programs for employees. 
And uh, we've seen an uptake in business, not only from the incentive program, but also from concierge travel, because companies are afraid to travel in groups with their uh, entire teams or customers. So they're seeing more concierge travel coming up. And so my comment was the support for all this new business uh, that's coming up. So that's a big, you know, just like was mentioned before in other calls, you know, your supply chain, uh, is everybody ready for growth? And that's, uh, I think that's where we're at. Yeah. Cool. Nice. Thanks a bunch. I appreciate that, Koki. All right, Illy, tell us a little bit about what's going on. Tell, for those that, that don't know you, if, if you want to you know, kind of tell who you are and what you do and, um, and, and, and your insights for the next successful 90 days of relaunch. Yes. Good morning, everyone. So I'm part of uh, VDL Industries, contract manufacturer. We do uh, fabrication and CNC machining. And for us, the next 90 days consists out of making sure that we uh, still limit visits. We uh, unfortunately okay. had to postpone the um, planned tour again because our upper management back in Europe uh, wasn't okay with that. Yeah. And we're so okay that's with that. going to be postponed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're sad. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a little bit of a bummer, but, you know, <laughs> it's okay. And then, yeah, within the company, we try to avoid large groups. So there's obviously moments where people come together and we try to limit it to three to four people at a time. Mm -hmm. And uh, also with lunch breaks and stuff like that, make sure that all the, the big groups are avoided. So mm -hmm. we keep the safety of our uh, employees uh, high in our standards. Okay, beautiful, beautiful. I appreciate that for sure. And and communication. I mean, as again, that's one of those other pieces that we keep hearing is is making sure that we keep that as you know the cornerstone, keeping the folks plugged into that. So, so thank you so much. I appreciate that. All right, Mr. J T Taylor, what's going on, buddy? What what are you seeing after? You said you're getting ready to get up, but get back out on the road, and get the sales cranked back up, right? Hey, hey, we, we are, Jason, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, maybe my comments come from the sales perspective is a little bit different because I'm depending on all my customers and prospects to let me know what the procedures are, how I can get back into when it's okay to come back in, all those things. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, the need for a lot of our customers to keep their equipment running has uh, conflicted a little bit with our ability to get inside to see the equipment and how to maintain it, so... Uh, we're working through that process now of how to get back into safely get back into customers' facilities so that we can do what we do with them. Okay. Uh, dump glue, make sure the glue equipment's running and make sure, you know, especially the food industry, the packages are going out without the boxes flying open or the, 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 the field breaking. Uh, right. So part of that is uh, more co upfront communication on my part, making the phone calls, not just stopping in, but making sure I've got an appointment with somebody and they know that I'm going to be there and reminding them that I'm going to be there right. uh, on the down there. So we're still working through that process. Uh, probably about 30% of the people I call or say, yeah, it's okay for it to come in now. Still about 70% say, no, we don't have a procedure in place yet to let vendors inside. Okay. So 70 are saying they do not have procedure. Not yet. Not okay. yet. Okay. Yeah, of course, most of our GMA members. Do. Okay. So they haven't had access to everything that we've had access to here. Uh, right. And then on the personal side, I've got my mask, got, you know, gloves when I need them, got uh, disinfected in the car and uh, take care of um, just me personally that way to make sure I'm not uh, putting anybody at risk right. or, or even even make sure everybody just feels comfortable when I'm, when I'm around them. Yeah. yeah, that's a great, you know, that, that having that that vantage point and that that commitment on the front end. Um, so, so we did a call and JT, that is awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that. There's, there's several, little, little, uh, several bits and pieces we're going, we're going to uh, peel out of that for sure uh, as well. But um, uh, we had a call on Monday and had uh, um, Scott Resplica from Delta Metals on the call. If you didn't hear that call, that was a, that was a rock star call. And Scott did a fantastic job talking about as a, as a manufacturer that visited sites and was engaged you know, the level that they go through to check temperatures on all their employees. And if their employees are out for one day, they have to go back to the doctor to get another test to ensure that they're not uh, COVID positive before they can come back to work. And, and he said, I know that it makes it, you know, it's a, it's a ding in our workforce, but 
we know for sure that we've done everything in our power to make sure that our folks are nice and nice and clear before we allow them to go into somebody else's facility. And I thought that was, I told him he needs to have a, 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 a flyer built out on that. You know, that's a great marketing piece that we know. And these are the things that we've done to ensure our safety, for, you know, our safety coming in. Here. That's a pretty cool, pretty cool angle as well. So, all right. Well, JT, I appreciate that for sure. All right, Joe. All right. We, we went, we went and toured Joe. We were so thrilled to be able to get back out in the field. Uh, we toured uh, JNS chemical and, and Bobby Dodd Institute and man, I was really impressed and excited about what you guys are go, got going on. There'll be some videos coming out very, very soon. As soon as we get some edits finalized. Yeah. How about that? I used that actually yesterday. Nice. Nice. <laughs> Cool. So, so tell us who you are, what you do, yeah. and, and what are the three things you think that people need to be planning around the, on the relaunch? Awesome. Well, thank you. Good morning, everybody. I uh, apologize for the lighting in here. My, I'm at the office, and my, my work from home setup is actually better at home than it is at the <laughs> office right now. I haven't been in here in a while. Right. Um, but yeah, I work for the Bobby Dodd Institute. We're a nonprofit here in Atlanta that works with the adults with disability community. Um, so we're in a little bit of a we're in the same space as everyone, but it's a, it's a little bit different for us because we have to just be extremely careful since we work with a lot of medically fragile um, and immune compromised populations. So for us, the reopening of our actual physical buildings and warehouses is gonna be a little bit of a slower process. Um, you know, we're, we're forecasting, we have a July 1st date set, but that I would, I would imagine will get pushed back depending on how everything goes. Um, fortunately though, we've, we have some good systems in-house to be able to, for most of our staff to work remotely. Um, you know, obviously our warehouse work is, is slowed a little bit, but we've really expanded in a lot of different areas. Um, and to continue to be able to support that work, that work from home mentality, uh, not only for our workforce team, but also for our benefits consulting and family support team is gonna be essential for us going forward. Um, and one of the notes I put in there was just continue to develop relationships outside of our core business. Um, you know, we've been able to completely pivot from, you know, picking and packing in our warehouse to procuring and supplying PPEs with, you know, sanitizer and, and gloves and just using our warehouse space to be able to supply, you know, like school systems and county governments um, that are in need because they're making a lot of bulk purchases right now. Um, to gear up for either a reopen or, you know, just planning for what, what the fall season brings. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's really important, I think, for us to just be really flexible with the changing business times and uh, to be able to continue to build revenue to support our programs and services. Okay. Very cool. Very cool. And I see you also said continue to support work, uh, remote work environments as well. So, so you guys are, you, you think that you're going to um, continue Continue quite a bit of the the, the, the remote work. Yeah, I, I think I think we will. Um, just because we have so much of our staff is is our people with disabilities, and it is much safer for them to be home. And you know, we've we've been fortunate to where it, it hasn't impacted. Actually, we've been more productive. I think honestly, with with work from home, it's been easier to set up meetings. You're not having to travel all around town. It's easier to get people together. So you know, in a, in, in a normal environment where I could maybe have four or five meetings that I was traveling to, I could do seven or eight or nine now a day, just like it is, you just pop on a call. So, you know, it's important for us to keep our technology um, moving in the right direction to be able to support that. Um, you know, we've partnered with Microsoft and gotten Chromebooks and, and, and some, some supportive devices to our teams who didn't have access to that. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I think we've given out almost 300 to our company in the past um, two or three months wow. uh, just to support that endeavors. And, you know, we've had a lot of support from the funding and the grant community to be able to afford that kind of technology push. Um, and it's, it's, it's been a really just a cool thing to see everyone kind of grow out, out of this pandemic. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. I appreciate that, Joe. Thanks so much. Thank you. All right, Mr. Roger Grabman, tell us what, you, what you're seeing, buddy. What are, what are the top three things that folks need to know or prepare for in the retooling relaunch? Well, one of the things to always consider is what is the customer's or client's pain point? Okay. And the pain point, I think, of this is anxiety. Okay. So take steps to reduce the anxiety. Mm -hmm. So I can put in place those things that uh, show that I'm adaptable and resilient. And he's passing that volume, and it's just a beautiful thing. 
<laughs> Value for everybody. Just and, and I can, uh, I, I can also, uh, you know, put in those features that are going to to give them reassurance. Okay. That I'm not going to bring the plague to them. Awesome. You know, a pox upon their house? No, not that. Right. And then uh, also it, promote the, uh, the my own adaptability and resilience. Okay. So I don't have to mingle with a bunch of people in my office. Mm -hmm. My oh, office is- That's a great, that's a great advantage. Yes. Also uh, in my field, I, I need to uh, keep in, in consideration the uh, infectious situation when I do a safety audit. Okay. And that includes the appropriate use of PPE Hmm. Uh, I, I've discussed before that the, there's a hierarchy of mitigation measures to be taken. And when people look at PPE, it's like, well, you know, the, the greatest risk for medical people in an infectious environment is taking the PP off, mm -hmm. the contaminated PP, taking it off. Okay. So the outside of their gown is contaminated, their gloves are contaminated, and if they misstep in removing it, uh, I had read where uh, in Ebola clinics, they had the person who's been doing the work and as they're doffing the PPE, somebody else is watching them to alert them when they misstep. Okay, yep, that buddy plan, yep, for sure, interesting. Good stuff, Roger. I appreciate that. Thank you, buddy. All right, Andrea. All right, introduce yourself, if you would, to the rest of the crew and tell us your role and what your thoughts are on the next 90 days for successful re recovery. Uh, I'm Andrea Davidson. I'm with a company called SpearTech. We are a specialized in B2B um, technology, uh, e-commerce for manufacturers and distributors. So kind of more automated part of it, orders um, and integration and things like that. Um, we have been working from home for the last two weeks, but we're going back in the office. Um, we are different, we're kind of like Cassie as far as um, we're not a manufacturer, so we don't have all the safety rules as far as learning a whole bunch of new stuff. We are going, like I said, we are going back to the office next week um, some new procedures, things like that. I, I think everyone probably has said it, but I think the most important thing to, for everybody to get back and get back busy and everything else is, is communication, whether it's with your team or with your customers or with people you're trying to sell um, and whether it's calming them or just saying hi and we're here if we need you know if you need us or anything like that i think the communication is the most important i know there are some companies that are kind of not wanting to say anything because they don't know what they're doing or whatever else and i think that's the worst thing to do um just you know on people's website or whatever else so i think communication is the number one with with everybody and anybody mm -hmm. Fantastic. Fantastic. I love it. I love it. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Andrea. I said, Andrea, sorry about that. I'm just, it's that Georgia public schools that I went to. Uh, <laughs> all right, Mr. Russ, share with us, brother. What's, what, what's going on? Tell us who you are. If everybody ought to know Russ, cause he's been a rock star on the GMA <laughs> tour series so far for the Corona tour. Uh, but uh, tell us who you are, what you do, what you, what you think the, the most three important things are for the recovery. Okay, uh, my name is Russ Dunlap. I'm a patent attorney at Taylor English. So um, patents, intellectual property, trademarks, trade secrets, stuff like that. Um, you know, what our office, uh, we, in fact, we, just this week, we got an email from our office manager. Um, and with, you know, the schedule and, and the process for how we're reopening the office um, on June, starting June 1st. Um, okay. But it's a soft return. Um, maybe I should preface that by saying, you know, we, uh, we've been able to operate pretty well through this um, from home. Most of our attorneys knew already how to work from home. We already had a remote attorney program. Mm -hmm. We already had 
the, the software and IT in place to make that happen. So all our attorneys have been working from home um, since what, March 14th, 15th, something like that. Um, and, and we've been doing it pretty well. We have paralegals and some staff that get, uh, are kind of on a rotating schedule to go back into the office. Mm -hmm. And it looks like that's gonna stay the same. Um, the staff can all work from home as well, um, but we want people in the office to be able to sign documents, notarize, get the mail, all those things. Right. Um, so the process we, uh, it, you know, what we've done to reopen is, is like Andrea said, is, is communication. Um, we've had near constant communication from office managers and from counsel and, um, you know, different people enforcing that, you know, okay, the attorneys got to stay home. But uh, also part of that communication has been some surveys they've sent out, you know, how many of you think you can stay working from home indefinitely full time? Yeah, I was I was the same way. How many of you <laughs> how many of you would like to come into the office one or two days a week? How many people feel like they have to be in the office to actually get work done? Um, so there there was uh, they took those results and kind of try to figure out, OK, how many people we got um, that and what services and what do we what do we need to put in place based on these survey results? So um, there are a few attorneys that, that are going to go back into the office, I think, full time. June 1st. Um, but most of us, I think, are doing a either continue working from home or, you know, maybe go in once or twice a week. That, that was me. I, I would like to go into the office and just be able to sit in my office, close the door and, you know, escape the kids and the spouse, maybe. No, I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that was, um, that was a big one is just communication. And part of this communication is, is, you know, exactly what, what the other kind of points are is, you know, access to PPE, you know, what, I think that was kind of the biggest challenge is, is getting the PPE to actually have the attorneys come back into the office to getting gloves and masks and, and, and you know, communicating how to use them and enforcing their use. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they're, they're encouraging us to get our own masks, but they, they're going to have a supply of masks and gloves. Um, for, for our purposes, you know, they said, you know, you need to wear a mask around the office. You can wear it in your, in your personal office if you want to. Um, but, you know, if you're going to go to the copy machine, they actually have a supply of gloves or even, I think it says finger thimbles to, you know, punch the numbers on the copy machine. Um, things like that are, are necessary to, you know, to ensure the spread, you know, the, the disease can't be spread through like, you know, touch points all over the, the office. Um, and then they also have been working with building management to ensure that, you know, the, the, the people that own the building are actually doing what they need to do to, to limit entry. Um, they, you know, they told us, you know, if, if you order food for lunch, they can't come into the building. You have to meet them outside the building really? to get your food. Yeah. Wow. Interesting. Yeah. Used to be we have we have a cafe in in, on, in the lobby that we had a rotating you know food company come in. Fuda was running it, and they'd have a different restaurant come in every day and set up shop, and you could go down and, and get food. Um, you know, get get they have a hot basically a hot bar set up, and you could get your lunch. But that uh, that's no longer available. There's a food delivery service called Fuda. Um, that you can order from different restaurants, and they'll deliver it. And there's a you know cart downstairs you can. Uh, get your food off of once they deliver it but now none of that's available anymore you have to basically go outside the office um, it's basically key card entry only um, and you have to go outside and, and meet your food delivery person to get your food Interesting. Um, so I, I don't know how long that will continue but yeah um, that's that's going to be sort of the reality for a while uh, starting June 1st at the office which I'm going to keep working from home most of us are probably going to keep working from home but um you know, that's, that's how we're sort of but that's getting. not a tailored English. That's a building management dictate. Mm -hmm. Really interesting. Wow. Oh man. That's, and that's cool because you know, having you come, come on board with us to share that piece of it, because we're all in different size spaces. We got, you know, some, some yeah. naturally work from home. We got small facilities and large facilities and office space and that sort of thing. Um, so, so thank you so much for us for that. I appreciate that. And Henry. Um, so what we're doing is everybody is typing in, in the notes, the top three things is Henry and Brian. I don't think you've added yet. If you can uh, type in the uh, Zoom chat, what you think the three three 
key components that we need to all be thinking about um, if you were saying this is what, what you need to do to have a successful 90-day COVID-19 business recovery plan? What needs to be included in that? So we are crowdsourcing the content. Um, we're going to consolidate this and we're going to come up with probably a 10 point plan. These are the, the key things that, that business leaders. So you guys got to be first on the list to contribute. So thank you so much. Um, the royalties will be coming out to you just anytime because we're going to offer this for free. Um, <laughs> so, so stand by the mailbox on that. But, um, but again, I think that, you know, being able to share some of these things Now I, I, I come at it from a little bit different vantage point, you know, um, um, as obviously as association leader, that's got a big event coming up. Um, the number one thing that I think, and, and, and just is, is the foundation is we got to make sure that we're smart about this and safe about this, you know, whether it's your employees, whether it's your customers, you know, I mean, those is critical that we maintain that that mindset, that safety mindset. So that's stepping off. I think that's kind of a, a baseline. And um, and what are those safety operations? What's the process? You know, what is it, what are the guidelines that each of us need to do? And then, um, and some of you guys have heard this. You're going to hear it more than today if you if you hear from me going forward. But um, I took a. a, a I, I took a sabbatical, took, went up to the weekend, went up to the mountains um, uh, to take a little break. And it was absolutely a fantastic break. I needed a breather, you know, love my spouse as we do. Uh, once every four or five years, I need to just go like breathe some undisturbed air. Um, and, and so I went up there, had a great time, kind of, kind of, kind of reset. And, and the pieces that I came away with is, um, we in Georgia, we have about a 90 day window of an unbelievably unfair advantage. Now, you guys might not be able to see it. I get to see it because I get to see our website traffic. Our website traffic at GMA over the last month has exploded with inquiries of companies trying to find suppliers, which is awesome. But what that tells me, I got, I, I, so, so we're going to go, we're going to go the long path on this one, right? So imagine if you manufactured a tractor and tractors need bolts to put all the pieces together, right? So you're building a tractor and you need bolts and your bolt supplier happens to be up in Michigan. Y'all know what's going on in Michigan? Y'all been watching the news? If you're a bolt supplier in Michigan and not officially deemed by whoever is picking that as essential, um, you're not going to work. And if that tractor manufacturer is got to have bolts to build that tractor, guess what they're going to do? They're going to search out a new supply chain. And Georgia, I am telling you, guys, we have a 90-day window of an unfair advantage on the nation. But we got to act on it. We got to put the pieces in place. We got to take the steps. So my number two thing beyond keeping employees and customers safe is developing a marketing plan. Right? We all got stuff, right? We all, Every one of us on this call have got different challenges in business and different things that we're doing. But for me, it is critical that we take the time now to step back because the old marketing plan, guys, it ain't going to work. I'm, I'm just, I'm just telling you now the old marketing plan that we got on the shelf, the things that we've always done, and this is how it, that's not going to work. So developing and getting crystal clear with your team and with this community, with the GMA community to share best practices and what's working and what's not is to develop a, a marketing plan for, especially for the next 90 days. So what does that look like? You guys are part of that. This is what we are developing here. And this is what we're going to share. We're, we're going to share on this Thursday call of what's working and how we're you know, how, how, how the things are coming together. We're going to, we're going to, you know, I mean, it's going to land in y'all's hands first and we're going to flush through that, but that marketing plan is 
critical. Uh, and I'll tell you, so so as an associate association executive that hosts trade shows, I'm part of the trade show executive community. And and some of you guys have heard these numbers before, but uh, but but the statistics are in that um, in the United States there has been a $146 billion worth of sales that either did not happen and will not or have been delayed. $146 billion in our economy just because trade shows in the U.S. have been canceled. $146 billion. Dude, that's a shot in our economy. Some of that is just gone forever and it ain't gonna come back. And that's cool. I mean, not like we want it, but that's just the reality. We can't cry over spilt milk. But my question for you is, are you ready, right? Have you taken the steps to sit back and say, okay, well, this is the reality that we have today. What are we doing and how are we putting these pieces in place? I believe that that because of, I mean, the, these indicators are coming into us. We're looking at the website saying, okay, so that $146 billion has got to be backfilled somewhere. Again, we're not going to be able to fill all of it, but if we don't have a, a game plan moving forward, I mean, think about this, the, 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 the sales pipeline that we always talk about, right? So this is the funnel, right? This is, you got to put a bunch of stuff in the top, in the funnel to go through the sales process so that you have a pipeline that you'll be able to connect with and, and convert to customers and provide your product or service to those people, right? We all got the same deal, but for most of us, that funnel was capped March 1st. The lid went on and I think it was welded shut for a little while. <laughs> I mean, some of us have been trying to peel it back for a while, trying to figure out, well, how can we get out and how can we do this? Can will customers let us in? You know, is email going to work? What's the, what's the process? You know, all my trade shows that I was scheduled for, they're gone, right? So, so, and right now people are trying to backfill what your salespeople should be doing right now, if you have a sales team for many, many companies, because of the dependency on trade shows, a lot of companies and their sales teams should be following up on leads that they received at trade shows. Anybody, anybody feel my love there? Y'all know what I'm talking about? If you got your business from trade shows and your trade shows went away, what do you got? And then you got to figure out what that is. So using technology, um, and, and using, again, this unfair advantage we have in Georgia, we have the opportunity, IMTS, it looks like if you guys are familiar with IMTS, it's a big trade show for technology and manufacturing. It is like a Mac daddy in Chicago, in Chicago, we, we've been, we've been doing some research in Chicago's governor said that they do not expect to be able to open up any live gatherings and trade shows until there's a virus, I mean, a, a vaccine available. So what do you think about that? That's, that's going to hurt. I mean, if you're going, if you're going to wait till you got a vaccine, Jack, that's going to be a while could be right. So, so in any challenge, there's an opportunity. So I believe, and, and so the, the, the theme of the summit this year is leading the way with GMA, right? Is that cool? Right. So GMA, we're taking the turn, we're taking the time to figure out how we can support our community and our state right now. So like him, love him, whatever your opinion is about Governor Kemp and his approach to open up business in Georgia. Everybody's got an opinion. I personally like Brian's a great guy. I mean, um, I think that what he has done is given us that opportunity. He has, he has put Georgia under the microscope everybody in the country. And I think that that, again, I think a, a lot of the website traffic that we're getting is due to the national press about what's Georgia doing, how are manufacturers dealing with this? I mean, I get calls every day from other states and other associations saying, hey guys, can, can you give us some insights on what you guys are doing? If I was in another state, I would be calling Georgia too, right? But the companies that are gearing up and getting ready to get back into production, what are they doing? They're looking for suppliers. And if their suppliers aren't available, guess what? Georgia's leading the way, right? We have an unfreaking believable chance 
I believe, again, a, a chance in a lifetime, opportunity of a lifetime if we capitalize on it. But we got to take we got to take a shot. Now, um, with that being said, what is your 90 day game plan? And this is not going to last forever. Now, the company that needs the bolts for the tractor, when they find a new supplier, do you think they're going to go back to the old supplier? They might have them as a secondary. But once we get that business and we get it in Georgia and people understand the opportunities that are here um, and the resources that are right here in our backyard, I mean, I think I, I believe that Georgia is not only going to lead the way in the recovery and getting folks back to business. We got to do it safely, right? And keep everybody healthy. But by leading the way, I believe that what we do in Georgia, the decisions as leaders in the industry, the decisions we make today will impact the nation because people are looking at us, right? Are you with me on that? You see what I'm saying? I mean, cause, cause they're trying to find, you know, I, I talk to leaders all the time in space. They are like, you know, and some of them will candidly say, I just want somebody to tell me what to do in this. Cause I don't know. I don't know what this next step's going to look like. Just give me a guide. Tell me what's next. I'm telling you what's next. I'm telling you, you we better, we need bold leaders to make solid and be decisive in their decisions to move forward and move forward safely with their people. But we can lead the nation and, and the way that we respond to this will be long-term. I mean, and, and, and we'll be seen as, I pray that there's not a second round. You know, if there's a second round, you know, all bets are off. But right now, all the statistics, and we've been tracking them tight. Uh, every trend that we see is in a downward trend. You know, there's a couple little hot spots, but they're taking care of those. And so, so as a leader on this call, you get to choose uh, the approach that you take, right? If, 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 if you want to take a wait and see stance, then I think you're part of the problem right? Because somebody is going to go fill that need, rest assured. And we got to jump on everybody else in the country to be able to do that. But we got to, we got, we got to pull together as a team to be able to do it. Yeah, Cookie. Okay. So uh, two questions and forgive me for being so bold, Please. but um, so your one statement is be ready to move forward as in have all the processes in place inside your company, your factory, whatever, as well as for your customers. So that uh, when that tractor company does call me for a bolt, I'm ready to ship. That's yeah. right, right? Okay. Yeah. Start so building inventory now. Take the time. If you can get it, if you can gather your, I mean, because because this is, this is a projection. We got to say, okay, it's coming. We just don't know when, so we got to be ready now and start building inventory so when those orders come in, we can fill them. Or yeah. if I don't want to put the money in building um, an inventory that I don't have orders for, I would have my supply chain ready to jump when I do get the PO. Exactly. Right? Okay, Perfect. cool. Okay, and then here's... Okay, go ahead. Yeah, and that's the, that's the piece that we've been talking about is a communication. You got to communicate up and down the supply chain every one of your suppliers you need to be reaching out right now are you ready do you have product can you ship it tomorrow right and then be ready to be able to convert whatever that is to your final product and move that along and reach out to your customers and say where are your orders you know i know, I know you stopped the order on blah 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 where are we at with that are are you ready to take the order if we can provide it now right when are you going to be ready so we need to make sure we, we manage that on both ends of the supply chain you know where it's coming from and where it's going to so yeah Okay, good. So that was the first part. Thank you. Um, the second part, which I don't think I'm all alone in with this. Um, okay, so the trade shows have, have, you know, are not happening, you know, in the last couple of months, who knows when they're back on, but say my biggest trade show ABC is not happening anymore. And I used to get all these great customers there. So how do I get, how do I find those customers? I know that XYZ exhibits, you know, the, and if I look at the 2019 uh, trade show information, I see, you know, 100 exhibitors mm -hmm. and uh, maybe those were my customers, they, maybe those were my suppliers, but do I get on the phone or how do I find that tractor company that's looking for a bull to call me instead of you for the bull? Well, so, so that's a great question. And, and all of us are in different spots. I mean, all of us have different challenges. Uh, the, the, 
the thing that I would I would encourage you to do is email absolutely last resort right I mean you know people have uh, I mean I get literally hundreds and hundreds of emails before lunch every day right and unless unless we're connected I'm probably not going to read it and even if we are I'm going to try to get to it because email we're just inundated with that but live mm -hmm. phone calls and talking to people and building relationships and it's not hey can 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 you buy today it's hey how are you doing and how can we help you and and what's your process right now you know and and, and i believe the empathy really rings true people are looking for relationships that's people are looking for relationships and people are looking for a place to plug in and be part of the community. I think we got a solution for that. How many people do you know, by a show of hands, know somebody that would have benefited from being on this call today to hear the game plan going forward? Okay, so my question is, is why did you not invite them? I did. One is there, okay, that's great. That's great. And, 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 and thank you so much for that. And I really appreciate that. And I know some of you guys are reaching out. You need to focus on growing your business. And I completely understand that. But in the process of that, feel free to use this as a tool. This is not Jason's community. This is your community. You can say, look, I got this thing. You know, I'm, 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 I'm hanging out with these folks and, they, and they've got some really great ideas and they've been providing some content that, that's been helpful for me. Why don't you come join me, right? Now these call this call is a members only call, but the rest of the calls that we host throughout the week, other than the networking on Wednesday, this one and the networking are the two that are members only, but the town hall on Monday and then the fun Fridays are all open to the public. Feel free to invite them and see if they want to be part of the part of the club and come hang out with us, you know? So, um, but, but people do want to be part of the community. Your question was, you need to get on the phone and call those people. If you've got a list of all the exhibitors that, it, that, that, that exhibited at a show that you did last year, plug into those because it, so, so I've been in, engaged really tightly with the Cobb Gallery, as you might imagine. Um, and they had, they have closed all of, you know, March, April, May, June, they actually axed uh, a couple of weeks ago. So June, there's not going to be any shows at the Cobb Galleria. Uh, and in and, and July, they have a few that are coming back on board, but they have nearly a full, full agenda in August. So we, as, as the, uh, as the state of Georgia or the canary in the coal mine for the nation, the folks that are doing their trade shows in August, bless their heart. Thank them so much for doing that because they got to figure out all the, the, the process, you know, how far can you be? Can you put 10 people at a table anymore? You know, and by September, we're going to have a whole new set of rules and a whole new set of expectations. We may all be wearing masks or may nobody be wearing masks. You know, talked to the guy Clorox recently and he said, everybody's still going to be sanitizing, but, <laughs> but, but it's going to, you know, we don't know what September is going to look like, but if you don't put it on the books, if you don't put it on the calendar, if you, if you, if you don't register for the events, you're not going to go right now, we're going to change things a little bit. We're going to offer a virtual ticket and it's the same price as going live. You know, it's a hundred bucks ahead to attend the summit with a breakfast and lunch and networking or a hundred dollars to hit it on zoom. Right. And we're just going to set up four zoom cameras. It's not going to be elaborate and we're going to tell folks on the front end. It's just core information. You can plug in. If you want to get the information, help yourself. I've got several companies that have corporate mandates that say their people can't, they can't travel until the beginning of next year. And they've already committed to buy 10, 10 to 20 tickets virtually. So their people can participate and they want to support what we're doing as an association in the space they believe in what we're doing so i spent, that's, I that's spent cool. a day at a, at a virtual seminar mm -hmm. and i have to tell you i didn't think it was going to be very good but the way they set it up and i'm not going to hear what they did they made it in, very enjoyable right and they right. took advantage they took advantage of the technology but they also made people feel very comfortable right so, so there's a lot of tools out there to make it work yeah, I've, I've looked at some of them and some of them are really nice and I've not found any of them that are affordable. I mean, you know, those uh, step in and to, to one of those deals, I mean, step in is 50 grand for the majority of them of quality products. So, and we're going to do some research on it. I, we'll, we'll do at least Zoom cameras for those folks that get tickets. If we can make it nicer, we're gonna, 
but it's not about the, you know, it's not about the meal you eat for coffee and connections, right? It's about the people and the information. And that's what the summit's going to be about. But, but and I know Cookie's engaged in this community as well. So we're going to be, we're going to be exploring that quite a bit. Okay, can I ask Henry, uh, what was so great, you know, they took, the seminar took advantage of technology, which is, you know, something you can't really feel or touch. So what made it so great? Because Zoom is technology, it can be boring or it can be very great. What was part of the technology made it a great day for you? Well, I, I think they took, they took it, first of all, they took advantage of the sessions to make sure that the sessions weren't overly long. Okay. So that was the one thing that they did. And at, at the break, I'm sorry. How long were they? Half an hour, 45 yeah, minutes? They, were, they varied in length. Some of them were 30 minutes, some of them were 45. There wasn't anything over an hour. Okay. But at each, each, at each break, they, they did something different. They brought a magician on board. They brought music on board. They had uh, uh, some people telling jokes, mm -hmm. you know. And, and different kinds of things. And of course, you can always add games in, in, the, in the process too. So to say, you know, let people play online. You can do a trivia thing. So there's a lot of different tools that you can get out there to make people feel like the, you know, the coffee break, you know? Yeah, that's cool. what we're gonna do to yeah, the coffee break. Out of it, yeah. yeah. Thank you. So, and the other thing, I, this is a different, this, different animal, but you know, Zoom, you know, I found this out. We, you know, we have a, a local poker game that we've been playing online you know, for charity and in it, along with the poker on a different, on, a, on the poker, poker uh, app in Zoom, we set up different rooms. So if you're at table one, you had a room. Yeah. There's nothing to say you can't do that in Zoom. Yeah, we can, yeah we're definitely going to do that. Yeah, we'll, we'll have that breakout session as well in that way. So yeah, Henry, and we might want to dig into that to find out who the provider was of that um, um, platform. I'd like to figure out maybe who that was. Sure, I'll, I'll talk. I'll talk to the folks there and get you some get you some some folks to talk to. All right, guys. Well, this has been this has been great. I know I talked a bunch on this thing, but but you know the, the key is uh, Russ is like, yeah, you did. <laughs> um, but the key is is I wanted to share with you guys, you know, what 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 my vision of these calls are going to be around is you know we're going to put this thing together. We're going to put a marketing piece out that'll go out nationally that GMA, again, the Georgia manufacturing community has developed this 90 day uh, retooling, relaunching, you know, the 90 day COVID business plan, business recovery plan. And we're gonna market this, you know, as, as, a, as a free, I mean, as, as a tool uh, to give back into the community. These are the things that we see because they are looking to us for guidance. They want us to be able to share with them as the canary in the coal mine, what is it going to look like on the other side? If we can give them some ideas and some insights, because we're going to try some stuff that it's not going to work. I mean, right. And so we want to share that with them too, things to do and things not to do. So with that, all that being said, guys, it has been so, so, so awesome. Thank you so much for your time being engaged in this call. Um, I'm going to, uh, we'll, we'll be posting this out on social soon. Actually it's on YouTube live. I think we got a couple of folks sitting in on the live channel. Uh, right now kind of kind of sitting in but um but if there's anything you know I, I need i need you guys to let me know if there's things that we can be doing for you i mean i'm dead serious about that if there's things that we can add value in your space and, and fill a gap answer a question we're here we're here to serve you and we want to figure out how to do that so uh if you have not written, bought your ticket for the summit buy one and buy one for a friend because we're live you want to pick up a table, we'll make you a smoking deal on a table right now. I mean, just, just let me know. Um, but, uh, but we are going to be, like I said, we are going to be putting these pieces together. We've got, uh, uh, I, I, I think, uh, Ily, I think uh, EVL, I believe you guys are going to be exhibiting with us this, this year. Uh, thank you for, for oh, nice. into that. We're excited about having you guys uh, be a part of that. And also, uh, add you you sign up after this uh, call. All right. Perfect. Perfect. Great. Glad to have you on there. We'll get you a good, great spot. And I think Cassie's going to be there with um, uh, Ad Victorian. So thank you guys. Of course, Russ, Russ and his team are sponsoring one of the educational breakout sessions. So 
yeah, thank you all, you all for being part of part of helping make this thing go because it's it's truly about community working together and that's that's why we that's why we exist. So with that, we're gonna go ahead and wrap this thing up. Call it a call. Um, we'll look forward to seeing you if you can make it for the fun Friday at four o'clock. We'd love to have you join us for that. And uh, if not, you guys have a great uh, long weekend, and we'll be back on track on Wednesday. Of, well, we've got Friday, and then we'll have Wednesday of next week. With that, guys, thanks Bye. again. You guys have a great day, and we'll talk soon. Bye-bye. Okay, so